2014 feels like a long time ago, but here's us two back to remind us that premium gaming is still a thing on iPhone and iPad with Monument Valley 2. I am James, this is AppSpy, and ah, uh, I'm very excited. I loved the first Monument Valley, as I'm sure lots of mobile gamers did. It was a released at the same time it was announced yesterday evening and uh, just got back in the office and first thing I needed to do was experience the beginning of the game with you guys. I have not played this yet. I am seeing this for the first time just like I imagine a lot of you are. There is a review in the works as we speak and it will probably be the next video to go up after this but I just had to, had to play this and I thought that we should do it together. So come with me for the first 10 or 15 minutes and we'll see what they've got in store for us. Now I probably don't need to explain the game in the first place. I imagine you all know what Monument Valley is now. I mean it was it was on House of Cards for goodness sake. So uh, you get the general idea. It's a puzzle game. You solve puzzles by using impossible geometry to make pathways through the world. I played through and completed the first game and it was just now, uh, you know, it was a lovely thing. It was a, a welcome break from all the match tree puzzlers and slightly cynical cash grab sort of things. And now we've got a new twist. The new twist which I see from the screenshots appears to be that there are two characters in this one rather than one. And already, look at this, the design is kind of different. These broken paths and stuff. Oh, hello. I just clicked to move and she's called in her mate. Oh, look at her little pal. Oh look at oh look at this. Oh that's adorable. Now is this a mother daughter thing? Is that what we've got here? Or is it just a little friend? So I'm gonna tap and my companion trots along behind me. Looking all perky. There are birds, which is a a kind of a, a callback to the first game. If you completed the first game, you'll sort of know what I mean regarding the whole birds thing. Right. Oh here we go. This was such a lovely aspect of the first game, the way that the puzzles and the structures would suddenly just unlock, they would turn and twist. And sometimes emerge from the ground like that one just did, and oh, it's absolute class. So here you go, I'm using that pathway to connect those two points. Now that they've passed over, I can just turn this, and then be able to join the gap here now, and take them all the way to the exit. These introductory levels serving as a tutorial. I've now stepped on that platform which is raising this one. Okay, so I think what I now need to do is go back here. Oh, actually here. If I go there, looks like this can now be turned. Oh, see I thought... What do I need to do now? In order to get up there. Ah, maybe I need to get to this button here. Now, presumably, that'll bring it back down, right? Oh! Oh, check this out. Oh, this is nice. Okay, right, so now I can climb down that staircase to get to here. I can turn this around, which now affects both of them. And that drops down. Oh, very elegant. Like games uh, such as The Room, where you have to reach through the screen effectively, uh, grab hold of items and objects within the game and turn them with your finger, there's that feeling of being connected to the world. With The Room, you're often you're grabbing desks and drawers and you're pulling them open and you're um, holding items and you're turning them and twisting them and it really feels like, and I said it before, like you're reaching through the screen to grab stuff. And that was part of what was so nice about Monument Valley, those levers and those turnstiles. You're putting your finger and you're twisting it around and it, it feels as if you're you're really doing it. And that gives you a connection. Wow, look at the colour. Isn't that nice? These are going to light up. <laughs> That's a lovely touch. So we can use that to get to this platform and then I can twist it back. There's a lot more in the way of uh, expressive lighting in this one. The other game was be beautifully coloured. All the shades that they used for the levels were these kind of wonderful pastel tones. One which everyone's copied since. I don't know if you've looked at the App Store, but after 2014 there was a huge change uh, in the way that games were colourised. Largely due to Monument Valley. 
What I'm seeing here is a lot more in the way of lighting effects. You can see the lighting is kind of blooming outwards. There's lots more gradient going on. That's very, look at that, that's gorgeous. And these are these interlevel bits that we used to have in the old game, like just before you reach the end of a stage, it'll take you to this grey area where gods would appear. I'm just going out here to see if there's anything there, because, yeah, it's a dead end, but... I can't help but think that's going to change in a second when I step on this. Well, oh, yes, look, it's another one of these totem gods, right from the first game. The spirits are here to tell us things. Even in youth, we knew the work our mothers left for us. Right on. Ro. I assume I'm called Ro. I see fear. Do you forget how young we were? Yikes. So that was effectively our tutorial stage. And there's the, uh, the end point. Same to same as the first game. Because they have to do this with all games where they reintroduce you to the mechanics. You can't assume everyone's played the first game, so we need to gently wander through. And I'm collecting little light orbs and putting them in my in my awesome hat. <laughs> ah, music swells. Lights beam out. And we are complete. This is another one of the games that falls into that zen category, where they're just, they're relaxing to play. There's something very, very soothing about it all. Look, even this, this is the menu select screen, where you choose what level you want to go to, and I can put my finger here. Oh, it all lights up. Oh, look at the... That's class. Look at that. My God. And there they are, waiting to go. See, now that's attention to detail. The Oasis. Young eyes see new wonders. Look at the colour change there. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so I know that these platforms can be moved up and down. Having played the first game, those little dots indicate they can be grabbed, like this one up here. I can move it backwards and forwards, which will be useful for taking me across this gap. I shouldn't wander. There we go. Let's hop in here. Where shall I emerge? Again, these musical surges to give you a little rush. Oh wow, look at that. I have to make them meet now. That's good, so as I pull one up, the other one will descend. So it's teaching you there's a link between those two things. The ones with dots, and the ones with those kind of grey mesh lines on them. So now they've appeared here, I can Ah, now this is interesting, because if I do that, I'm separating the two. But look, they maintain contact, they look at each other, and she kind of tries to get closer. So we're re-establishing the link between the two characters there. Oh no! Now it's falling down the hill like a landslide. Oh my god, that's badass, look at this! Wow. When she's chasing you, again, th that was set up just a minute ago. The fact that she'll move to try and be as close as she can. So this is a way, I think, of explaining that you don't control that other character directly, but oh my god. <laughs> oh nice, now I can slide down? Yeah. That although you don't control the girl in the red cape, she kind of is controlled by your movements because she will try and move closer to you wherever you are. So I guess as I walk up here, yeah, look, she'll follow. See, that's showing and not telling. In terms of the design of things like movies and whatnot, ah, I guess we both need to get here. So I'll go and fetch her. The idea is if you've got a visual medium, and everyone, a lot of people will know this already, but just in case you don't, there's this rule about showing, not telling. So the idea is if you can at all avoid it, rather than going and having a character say that they're really strong, hello, I am Thor, I am really strong. What you do is you show Thor picking up something really heavy. Because it's a visual medium. You don't need to say it. People are smart and they'll work it out. Right, that can be lifted up here. So this is what the game is doing. The game is, without having to give you a little pop-up screen saying, the girl in the red cape will walk around and follow you, 
whenever she can. Wherever you are in the world, she will try to be as close to you as possible. You don't need to say that. You can show it. Oh, hello. Um, right, so now I need to go here. Which means I can get them both onto the side. And if I pull down, I can now get them both up here. This is reintroducing the idea that you can walk on all sides of a platform. Gravity doesn't pull you off. You won't fall. Ooh, nice. Very nice. Okay, so let's get up here. Let's see what happens. Those blocks fly away and form... Ooh. Badass! The rest of it. So presumably I can just walk up here. Wow, instead of collecting the light orbs, she's kind of initiating a little firework explosion. Let me tap on that. Oh! Oh my god, right, okay. Oh, what?! No! I'm drawing this with my finger. Oh my god! That's, that's a lovely touch, look at that! You draw your own little light totem, and then when you reconnect it, it animates it. That's a great touch, come on! Letting you put your own personal stamp on the world there. Fantastic! <laughs> See, you don't get enough of games which, rather than just giving you a kick for, you know, shooting the man in the face, and like, I know I mention this stuff a lot, don't get me wrong, I enjoy shooty games. I, I love first-person shooters. I grew up with them and I, you know, I adore them. I've got a lot of time for it. It's, it's great. But I also like the option to not do that and to exercise different parts of my brain. It's, an, it's a fun thing to do. I, I like games when they can be emotional, when you can explore, like, the full gamut of what interactive digital entertainment can provide. And it can do a lot of things. It can simulate warfare really, really well. It can also make you laugh and make you cry and do all the other things that you would expect from, hello, art or game design. Right, if I can get up here. Now, by joining those two together, if I move up, will she climb the stairs? Yes, she will, because she wants to get to the high ground like me. So now it's teaching us that there are some buttons, these circular ones, where they require two people to press them rather than the square ones which require one. Again, we show we don't tell. Wow, yeah, the impossible triangle. This is kind of where Monument Valley came from, this this optical illusion right here. Like, that, that shape can't exist. And yet here it does. Let's speak to the spirits and see what they say. It is easy to be nervous when she grows so quickly. Often the challenges we face do not require the strength to hold on, but the strength to let go. I wonder if one of the game designers had a child between Monument Valley 1 and 2. <laughs> this feels like, oh look at all, look at the, the mist that's sitting around the bottom of the battlements. And here we go. We're now talking about the separate pairing. So if I go here and go like that, pull this on, she'll jump on. And if I go down here and then move, she will jump off to follow me and press the button. Ah, this is very nice. They've given you more of the same, but they've done the right thing and they've done it in a different way. The same but different, which is what all sequels kind of have to be. And it's very, very tricky to get that right. Now, how do I get her to press the button that's here? That's the question. So what can we move? Now, my character here, she can't go past this rock little formation there. She can't walk off the edge here. Here. Now, can I twist or turn? I can't do that. Right. 
So what's the move? This bit here, that seems to be just encased in light. There's nothing to be done there. I can't, I'm swiping the bottom of the screen and, and the edge of it. I'm not getting any results there. <gasps> oh, hello. I didn't know that that door could be activated. Brilliant, right. So there we go. Now we have the option to turn. That's interesting. So if I can use that, I can stop her walking away. Yes, that's exactly what I want. Ah, I need to be standing on it. So if I stand that there, I'll turn this around. She'll go there. There we go. And I can walk back here, bridge the gap. Oh, but it separated her again. I can go through this door. We'll both disappear. And we're through. Okay. Oh, very smart. Very good indeed. We've got the... If you've seen the movie Labyrinth, it's the end of Labyrinth. That's right, you walk up there. Now I need to get to walk down here. I'll boost her up. And then we'll both stand on the circle one. The world shakes. And the staircases appear and the doors open. Oh, yes. I'm going to have a grand old time with this, guys. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lovely, lovely thing. Now, I'm going to leave it here. Like I said, we're going to have the review video up very, very, very soon. So don't worry. We've got you covered. Uh, but thank you for watching this first glimpse of Monument Valley 2. Links are in the about section below. And uh, £4.99 and or dollars. Is it going to be worth it in the end? The review will tell you very shortly. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon.